Hola amigos y amigas, you are now with Jocelyn y como siempre, I'm so grateful you are here. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. You already know all the goodness we're about to get into and if you are new here, welcome as well. If you enjoy lifestyle, spirituality, self-development, self-development, journaling, all of that good stuff, then make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my weekly videos and you join in on this beautiful growing community. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you and guiding you through 10 journaling prompts that are intending to help you practice shadow work specifically with and for your inner child because there's all kinds of shadow work, right? And so these prompts will specifically be having you tune into your inner child and bring forth some healing. So we are calling in our inner child and creating a safe space for some honest, vulnerable conversations. And trigger warning, right? Because shadow work isn't easy to practice. And I pray that the guidance that is being offered to you in this video does make the practice a bit easier. The way that I formatted this is I'm going to be offering you a shadow work prompt and then I'm going to offer you a follow up prompt that is intending to bring you some sort of resolve, some sort of clarity of what would have felt healing for you in that moment that you were experiencing that shadow. It'll make sense to you as you walk through these prompts and as I guide you through them. But again, I encourage you to create a safe space for yourself as you call in your inner child and practice this shadow work because it may feel a bit tender to the heart, mind, and spirit. So make yourself a cup of tea, light some incense, play some soothing to your soul music in the background, and without further ado, let's get into these 10 inner child shadow work prompts. What environments did not make me feel safe and why? So take a moment, right? I feel like the all of these prompts, all of these shadow work prompts are going to be prompts that are going to call you to take a meditative moment to visualize, right? To recall the past, to tune into your inner child, to listen to what your inner child has to say about this. So when you tune into your inner child and ask your inner child, what environments made you feel unsafe and why. I encourage you to be as detailed and specific as possible, to recall all the sounds and textures and people and um, colors, literally any and every detail that you can recall, journal it. What was it about that environment that made your inner inner child feel unsafe and why and you know there are things that make us all feel unsafe that we can all share in common with and then there are other things that are very specific to each and every single one of us that make us feel unsafe so that is what I'm encouraging you to discover are those unique things about these environments or this one environment that made your inner child feel unsafe. What kind of environment would have made my inner child feel safe? Okay, so now you gained some awareness on the kinds of environments that made your inner child feel safe and why. So now let's bring some resolve, right? Now let's bring forth some greater clarity on what would have felt safe to you in those environments. What was it that you needed from those environments to make you feel, to make your inner child feel safe? And it's so important that we practice this follow-up 
of bringing forth some kind of resolve, bringing forth some kind of clarity when we are doing shadow work of what would have felt healing for us in that moment, right? What would have felt safe for you, for your inner child in those environments? And part of the intention of gaining this clarity of what would have felt healing for you, for your inner child, what kinds of environments your inner child would define as safe is to apply that into your life now as an adult. So if you gain clarity on what felt, what kinds of environments felt unsafe and what kinds of environments felt safe for you as a child, this also applies to you as, as an adult in large part, right? So lots of healing here. Let's dive into this first part of the shadow work regarding environments. Describe a moment where your inner child did not receive the nurture and support that your inner child needed. So again, take that meditative moment with yourself to recall a moment from the past, to recall a memory where your inner child, where you as a child didn't receive the support, the nurture, the motherly nurturing energy that your inner child, that you as a child felt you needed in that moment, right? Perhaps it was a moment at school where you felt you really needed some comfort, some nurturing, some support, and you didn't receive it. Perhaps it was a moment at your one of your friend's houses. Perhaps it was a moment uh, while you were playing outside. Perhaps it was a moment um, during Christmas. Recall one of those moments where your inner child did not receive the nurture and the support that your inner child, that you as a child desired and again, did not receive. And if you'd like to expand on it even more, how did that make you feel? What would have made your inner child feel nurtured and supported in this moment? So now you've gained awareness of what made your inner child feel unnurtured and unsupported in a particular moment in your life as a child. So in that moment where you did not feel like you were nurtured, where you feel like you did not receive the support that you needed, that you desired, what would have made you feel nurtured in that moment? What would have made you feel supported in that moment? And again, be as detailed and specific as possible. And again, this clarity of what would have made your inner child, what would have made you as a child in this moment feel nurtured and supported, can probably also bring you so much clarity on what makes you feel nurtured and supported now as an adult. So reflect on that as well. When did my inner child have the tendency to feel less than and make their self, make myself small? This one feels really important because I feel like, I mean, really all of these prompts really, really have so much to do with our sense of self-worth as adults, right? Like that's why healing our inner child is so important, but reflect on when you as a child had the tendency to make yourself small because you felt less than, right? When, when 
would you find yourself feeling less than, right? And to expand on it even more, why? Why did you feel less than in these moments, in these environments, in these relationships? And how would your inner child play small, right? Like, did you play small by rejecting new friendships? Did you play small by really isolating yourself? Did you play small by um, like becoming very shy and quiet and timid um, by no longer using your voice? Like what were the ways in which you as a child ended up making yourself smaller because you had these experiences where you felt less than? What were those experiences where you felt less than? Why did those experiences make you feel less than? And how did you respond to that by making yourself small? What did making yourself small as a child look like? And again, only takes only take what resonates. If this prompt doesn't resonate with you, then don't try to force it, okay? But definitely take a, a moment to reflect on if this applies to you and your inner child. Why is your inner child worthy of taking up space? Why is your inner child worthy of taking up space? This is what I mean by all of this really being directly connected to our sense of self-worth because we don't realize that the ways in which we made ourselves small as a child maybe the ways that we are making ourselves small as an adult and may be a huge influence in why we may feel unworthy as an adult. So remember that as you're doing this inner child healing, you're healing yourself, right? As an adult, as you are, um, coming to these resolutions, right? Coming to understand what would have made you feel safer and heard and supported. These are clarities that you can use to make yourself as an adult feel safe and heard and supported, right? So really use this prompt as an affirmation for you as an adult to take up space, right? So why is your inner child worthy of taking up space? Think of just how beautiful and wonderful and brilliant and adventurous and playful and imaginative and intelligent and all of these things that describe your inner child, that describe you as a child. Bring all of that up and really just affirm to yourself, affirm to your inner child why you are worthy to take up space. In what ways did my inner child feel misunderstood? This is somewhat of a broad prompt, right? But whatever first comes to mind for you as you are in conversation with your inner child, as you are taking that meditative moment to revisit the past, to revisit your childhood, and think of the moments, the environments, the experiences, the spaces, the relationships, the conversations, the the exchanges in which you felt misunderstood, whatever first comes to mind, write that down. And you may find that as you begin to journal more and more will come up and you'll gain more clarity on the ways in which your inner child felt misunderstood, right? Perhaps, you know, when you would have these outbursts of energy and you know, whoever was around you would scold you for these outbursts of energy, but really you were just, you know, a very playful, energetic child um, with, you know, a certain imagination that may have felt very loud for those around you. Um, and they perceived it the wrong way. They looked at it the wrong way. And you just felt incredibly misunderstood because you were just trying to have fun and explore your imagination. Like really just... <sighs> 
again, take those moments, hold that safe space for yourself to really think of the details, think of the specifics of how and when and why you felt misunderstood. What were those moments? What were those misunderstandings? Um, what were those ways that you as a child, that your inner child felt misunderstood? Affirm your inner child that you understand. So again, this is an affirmative prompt where you're affirming your inner child, where you're affirming to yourself as an adult, as who you are today, as a teenager, whoever, whoever you are watching this, affirm to yourself at whatever age, stage, season you are in your life, where you are here now doing this inner child work, connecting with your inner child, and affirm to yourself that you understand now all these moments that you may have, all these ways that you felt misunderstood as a child. Affirm to your inner child that you understand now, that you no longer have to feel misunderstood, that the most important person, which is yourself, understands now, right? Like really bring your inner child forth into your imagination and imagine, envision yourself speaking to your inner child, speaking to your little self, your younger self, and telling your younger self, telling your child self that you understand now. I understand that in this moment, you just wanted to play. I understand that in this moment, you were just trying to bring resolution to this conflict. I understand that you were simply um wanting to make a new friend you know like just really comfort and console your inner child by affirming that you understand now what apologies does your inner child deserve so think of the apologies that your inner child deserves all of our inner children all the children in this world deserve so many apologies <laughs> um and you may feel like well i'll save this bit for the next prompt but yes think think of think of the apologies that your inner child is worthy of receiving and that perhaps never received or perhaps received in some kind of way but actually didn't feel sincere genuine in the moment as as you were a child and reflect back on all that you've journaled through the past few prompts and see what comes up like you know if you revisit the first prompt where you know you recalled certain environments that didn't make you feel safe and you realize that you deserve a certain apology because you were in this environment that wasn't safe. Um, so use the past few prompts that you journal to assist you in reflecting on and declaring the apologies that your inner child is worthy of receiving. And for this very last prompt, apologize. Simply apologize. And what I was gonna mention in the last prompt is like, you may feel like certain apologies shouldn't come from you, that certain apologies should come from your parents, from your best friend from childhood, from your teacher, whatever, whoever else, you know, that that yes, your inner child does deserve apologies from these other people. But let us acknowledge the truth that the most powerful apology that we may ever receive comes from our own self, right? And even though we may have not inflicted that unsafety or unworthiness or... Um, uh, pain, suffering upon ourselves as children, and it was caused by someone else when we were children, we still have the power to bring forth the apologies that we deserve by us 
as adults, as teenagers, as elders, apologizing to our inner child, to our own self as children, because you'd be surprised. Like if you feel like someone else should apologize to you, but hasn't and perhaps isn't ever going to, and you take the initiative to just gift yourself that apology again, even though like it didn't come from you, even though that pain um, didn't come from you, you'd be surprised just how healing it actually is to receive an apology from yourself anyways. And especially our, ch our inner childs, right? Our younger selves, like us as children, like if, imagine if like you as a child got a visitation from your older self, from who you are now, and you received that apology from who you are now as a child. Like, I don't know about you, but my inner child would have loved that. My inner child would have loved that visitation from who I am today and receiving those apologies. So all that to say, like if you want to make this like a journal entry, if you want to make this a letter of apology to your inner child, if you want to make this a poem, however it is that the, this apology, that these apologies come to you and arise for you and feel very healing and cathartic to you, journal in that way that you feel inspired to, but <sighs> gift yourself, gift your inner child the apologies that your inner child deserves now. And that, my friends, are the 10 journaling prompts for our inner child shadow work. I pray that this journaling session, that these prompts that I've offered you and guided you through did sincerely bring forth some healing for you and your inner child did um, deepen your relationship with your inner child did bring forth some clarity to you as who it is that you are now and you know these prompts are prompts that we can be revisiting throughout our lives through different seasons of our lives and see if anything new comes up so I encourage you to do that but Really, I'm just so proud of you for saying yes to this experience anyways, to receiving this guidance anyways, because again, it isn't easy, but it's so, so worth it and it's so powerful and it really is so healing and transformative and awakening. So I'm so proud of you for investing in yourself in this way, for gifting your inner child this investment of your time and energy and if you feel inspired to share anything from this experience from journaling these prompts if any of these prompts in particular really resonated with you and your inner child then I'd love to know in the comment section below and I look forward to journaling with you in the next video so so much love blessings and gratitude Bye.